Good morning, Fellowship. I'm Rodney Holmstrom. I'm one of the pastors here at Fellowship and uh, have the privilege of leading the ministry of Celebrate Recovery uh, here at Fellowship. And it's so good to be here with you this morning as we jump into the Advent season. My definition is the coming, the anticipation of the coming Messiah. It's an opportunity for us to stop, pause, and reflect, to lift our eyes up and be reminded of the incredible gifts we have in this season. But some of us in the room are in a good space, and it is a time of celebration. We're, we are building new family traditions as we celebrate and acknowledge the coming Savior, the Messiah, and the gift of what it means, the true meaning of this season, the reason for the season, this Christmas, loving, coming Messiah that's with us to be our rescuer and our provider, our comforter. But I love that we can come into this space and be honest. Some of us are in a hard season, aren't we? It's a season of grief, and some of us are in this season, it's anniversaries of lost loved ones that we're walking through, or maybe you're in some financial struggles, or, or maybe it's trying to get that job and it just hasn't come yet, or sickness or disease that it feels like there's no end in sight and it feels a little bit hopeless. No matter where you are and what position, what posture you have this morning, can I just say welcome? You are in the right place. And here's been my prayer leading up to this time, that, that no matter where we are in this season, the good, the bad, the hard, that we all together as a body of Christ could come together and lift our eyes up to the one, to know our hope is in him. He will be the one, regardless, that will carry us through the season that we are in. And there's a central thought that I want you to hold on to in our time this morning. It's this, that enduring hope is found only in Jesus. Do you believe that this morning? Several years ago, my wife and I went to Manitou Springs and did the incline. Anybody ever done the incline? Yeah, it's brutal. Don't do it. <laughs> Unless you're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> it wasn't so much the, the amount of steps. I think it's 2,144 steps to make this climb. It's the high altitude that makes your lungs feel like they're burning inside your body. <laughs> But I remember standing at the bottom of the incline. It was my wife and I, and we had our friends with us, which, by the way, had climbed it before. I'm wondering if they were kind of going, well, get ready, watch this, right? But we're looking at the incline. We're like, blue skies, we can see the peak. This is going to be awesome. We were inspired. We were motivated. We were ready to go. And then we started our trek, and we got to the top, or what we thought was the top, only to discover it was a false summit. Whew, defeat. <laughs> we came over that peak only to see there was another dip and a long, we had a long way to go. And if I'm being honest, our legs got heavier in that moment. We were looking at each other like, what have we gotten ourselves into? We eventually made it to the top. But in that process, in the defeat and the discouragement, went from inspiration to heart-wrenching exhaustion we found ourselves moving our eyes from looking upward to now looking downward. Life can throw things at us sometimes. Sometimes we're in a season where we don't ever reach the peak and we never experience what it's like to be on that mountaintop to see the other side of that. And it can be discouraging. What do we do when it doesn't feel like God is with us? When it feels like he's forgotten us or we're all alone in this space? How do we keep our eyes up in this space. Enduring hope is found only in Jesus. And the Christmas message is about hope. And you take away hope, it kind of breeds this apathy, doesn't it? Proverbs 13, 12 says it well. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. This Christmas Advent season is a chance for us to lift our eyes up. And let me be clear when I say hope, I'm not talking about wishful thinking. I really wish this will happen. I hope it and expect that it might happen. No, it's hope with a certainty. That's what makes the Advent season a chance for us to lift our eyes up and with certainty to know that God, Jesus Christ for us is going to be with us no matter what's happening in our life. He will be with us through the good, the bad, and the hard seasons. 
But there's hundreds of prophecies in the scripture that give us this oxygen for our faith, that give us the, the strength and the courage to keep taking another step in the incline of life as we continue to walk as believers in Jesus Christ. But I want to lean into one specific promise, and, and I want you to kind of just keep this in your heart to understand that these are not coincidences. You know, only God could do that. Even the specificity of these promises we see in these prophecies, these promises, these are not coincidences. These are actually God making good on his promises. And this Advent season can be an opportunity for us to lift our eyes up and know that he is a God who keeps his promises for us. And that should help us to take heart in this season. But I want to look at Isaiah 9, verse 6. We sang about it earlier. It's a reassurance for us to know that God is faithful, to give us assurance and reassurance that if he fulfilled these promises, those promises, he will fulfill the promises to come. Our hope knowing he is with us. Isaiah 9, 6 reads, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. I love that. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it, with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. That seems like a long time, doesn't it? The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This promise gives assurance. It gives reassurance. The son is going to be given. It becomes our gift. It, it was a hope for them in this season, the coming Messiah. And you may have heard this saying that where there is life, there is hope. I think it's actually the opposite. Where there is hope, there is always life. And our life comes from knowing we can put our hope in him, knowing that he is with us. He's proven it in the past, and he will prove it in the moment, and he will prove it in the days to come. It gives us assurance that we have life because of the hope that we have in Jesus. And you take away hope, and life is just a burden and a pain, isn't it? But because we know he's with us, we can keep looking up. He's a hope worth waiting for in this season. With certainty, not wishful thinking, but with certainty, we know he's with us. I think to fully appreciate this gift, though, we have to at least acknowledge a little bit about what's happening for them, the people that would hear this promise for the first time. And there's a divided kingdom, the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah. There's a threat of war, an Assyrian invasion. They're advancing, and this powerful force poses a significant threat to the people of Israel and Judah. We know there's unstable leadership. There's challenges from these rival nations outside of them, but also unstable things happening inside their leadership. Sounds a little bit familiar to the broken world that we live in today, doesn't it? And make no mistake about it, the broken world you and I live in with the moral issues is the same broken world they lived in over here. Moral issues, moral decay, idolatry, calling them back to repentance and faithfulness to God. God knew that the outside threats and the internal struggles would harm them, that he loved, his son. he loved us enough that he would send his son to leave heaven to become our rescuer, to become our savior, the coming Messiah, our hope, knowing that he's come to be with us. And I love the language that Isaiah uses. God uses speaking through Isaiah when he says, and the government will be on his shoulders. You could say this, that it's like the weight of the world is put on his shoulders. The outside threats, the internal struggles, all of that. He's saying, I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ, to take all of the weight of the world on his shoulders for you so that you don't have to carry that. And the very next thing he says, and his government and his peace will never end. Whew, breath of fresh air. 
That word government, you could, you could look at the Hebrew in that, and it's translated as dominion, power, sovereignty, through legal authority. It symbolizes this, this royal authority. He's willing to take that on for you and I, and that's how much he loves us. That's why we can have hope, regardless of the things that are happening around us in this season. Because when he's with us, we're stronger. We're better for it. This gives us hope. It should give us assurance to keep moving forward. It becomes that oxygen for our soul, our faith, as we look back at his fulfilled promises. I love what Tim Keller says about hope. He says, human beings are hope-shaped creatures. How you live today is completely shaped by what you believe about your future. And I believe we can't fully believe anything about our future. We can't live at peace and with hope today if we don't look back and understand what he's already done. He's a God who is faithful, and he will continue to be faithful. And if I live my life knowing he is a faithful God, I can look with confidence forward knowing he will be with me, and he will continue to fulfill the promises that he's always said. God was with them. He's with us now. God was with them then, he's with us now. And we can, have, we can have assurance in that because seven centuries later, the Messiah would come. The message that Isaiah is saying to them in this passage, in this promise, this prophecy, isn't really any different than the message he's saying to us. We just get to look at it through a different lens. We look through the lens of Jesus Christ. We have more information. We know how the story ends, don't we? We know what Jesus would go on to do for us. He's saying the same message to us. And this is what I love. God is not asking us to figure it out. Whatever you're facing, I can't see it. The clouds have rolled in. It's blocked my vision. I can't see the false summits, the storms, the, 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 all the messiness of life. God's saying, you don't have to figure it out. What I do need you to do, he's asking us as his kids, is to keep our eyes upward and on him, putting our trust in him, knowing he's already figured it out. He's already figured it out, guys, no matter what we're facing. My wife and I um, are officially grandparents now. That makes me officially old, I guess. But we have three grandkids now. And the last two grandkids, uh, my granddaughter from my daughter and my grandson from my son and his wife, and after my uh, grandkids were born, they immediately went into the NICU. And can I just be vulnerable with you for a minute? It was some hard, hard waters for us. 40 days felt like 50 years to us in the NICU. And I'm being honest, just sitting on our, me and my wife like to sit on our back deck and do our quiet time and we do our gratitude list and we do prayer. And there was many mornings where we just had a lot of tears. Those false summits, today's the day. No, it's not. And all these false summits and the clouds would roll in and we got to a point where it felt so discouraging that our eyes went from looking up to looking down in discouragement and even looking inward with criticalness and, God, why are you doing that? Have you forgotten us? The waiting feels like too long. But I love how the body of Christ, and many of you in this room were a part of this, by the way, and thank you for that. You prayed for us, and you, through your prayer and coming alongside us and locking arms, helped us to lift our eyes back up and acknowledge that we can put our hope in him as we keep our eyes on him in the midst of the storm. So thank you for that. But let me be clear that, that hope And putting with certainty, hope with certainty and keeping our eyes on him is not acting like the pain isn't there. It was still there, but our perspective was much different. See, we didn't know how this was going to turn out. We didn't know if our grandbabies were going to even leave the hospital. But what we did know is God was going to be with us all the way through it, no matter what. As Heath, our great worship leader, put in his devotional this past week, there's a confidence in knowing that we are held securely, even if healing doesn't happen on our timetable the way we think it should, he's going to be there to help us all the way through it. Lifting our eyes, knowing no matter what, he will guide us through this season. See, what Isaiah wrote, what makes it so powerful is the reality behind it. 
we know much more than they even knew it in that moment. What's fascinating to me is I think about those that heard this promise. Uh, they never saw these promises fulfilled. 700 years after the, these words were spoken, it would be fulfilled. They never saw it. In fact, I think it's important we jump over to Hebrews 11, verse 39. These were all commended. Who? These people that heard this promise, they were commended for their faith. Yet, yeah, don't miss this, none of them received what they had been promised. Talk about waiting. Two weeks feels like an eternity. 700 years is another story, isn't it? They never saw it fulfilled. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. I love this beautiful passage because right before this is talking about everything that they had to endure. See, things actually got worse after they got this promise. They have all these threats. They have out, outward threats. They have internal struggles. Eyes are lifted. There's hope of the coming Messiah. And then things got worse. Don't miss this. The promise that they were hearing, they, re, they were required to look forward for the coming Messiah. That requires incredible faith, doesn't it? We sitting here today look back and know that he's already come, but it requires incredible faith, doesn't it? Here's the common denominator. Both postures, both positions require keeping our eyes on the Father trusting him that he makes good on his promises. I'm going to keep my eyes on you. For us sitting here today, Jesus, I'm keeping my eyes on you. And there is a confidence with certainty to know you will be with me in the season. Regardless of the outcome, you will be faithful in the end. He was with them then. He is with us now. He is the light of the world in our darkness, in our struggles, in our pain, in our grief. He will never leave nor forsake us. See, the promises, as we look back and we see the fulfilled promises, give us confidence that he'll keep on fulfilling the promises. That means that we can hold on to today's promises, that he will never leave nor forsake us. You're in the battle, and it feels like the clouds are blocking your view, and it feels like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Because of what we've seen him accomplish in his previous promises, we can know that he will fulfill the promises that one day we will live forever in the next with him. We can with confidence, with certainty, hold on to that hope that he is going to keep with us. He is with us in this. And what I love about this, when we see those words that Isaiah says, he shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. They become more than just a bunch of words, don't they? It's like, oh, that's a cool name. Those are some cool names. Now, when we believe through faith and we keep our eyes on him and know he's with us with certainty, those names are not just kind of cool names. They become personal for you and I because we are followers of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living in us as his kids. They, they become personal for us. He's not just a wonderful counselor. He is my, we can use I am me statements. He's my wonderful counselor. Counselor, Jesus is the living incarnation of God's awesome glory. We have assurances that Jesus didn't leave heaven just to do band-aid fixes on my cuts and my bruises. No, he came to ultimately end the earthly battles, the struggles, the pain that we are walking through today. He is my wonderful counselor. He is my mighty God. He doesn't just calm the storms. He's with me in the storm, and he will ultimately defeat death, and he did. We can with confidence know, God, if you'll do that, I know you can do this. You'll be with me in the days to come. Everlasting Father. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same tomorrow. As Revelation says, who was and is and is yet to come. With confidence, he is my everlasting Father. He's with me through every false summit. Every roller coaster ride, every storm of life, he is with me in my pain. He is my comforter. As my prince of peace, I can know that he brings hope in my chaos and seemingly hopeless situations. He is my comforter in my pain. We can, with confidence, personalize these beautiful names. They're not apart from us, they are 
in us and living and breathing inside of us as Jesus lives and walks with us every step of the way. See, for me, it's a good reminder in this Advent season, this Christmas season, to be reminded that I don't have to be surprised by the the unsettling things, the challenges of life that come my way, because I know when God's with me, he's doing something. As J.I. Packer says, he puts it this way, God in his wisdom means to make something of us that we have not yet obtained. God is doing, he's making something of us on the journey. And though it's hard and painful and we can't see the end goal, he's making something of us. And May we never forget that. May we walk with hope and certainty that he is with us through the good, the bad, the hard. I love before Isaiah gives this promise in verse 6, if you go back a few verses in verse 2, maybe you can relate to this. There's some powerful words. See if you can find your story in verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. Is your life feeling messy right now? Maybe you feel like you're walking in the land of deep darkness and you've lost sight of the end goal, maybe you've lost sight of the Messiah and you've gone from looking upward to now looking downward. This promise can give us assurance that he's been with you, he will continue to be with you, and he will be with you in the days to come. That maybe we could even pray Ephesians 1.18. Maybe this would be a prayer for you, Paul's words I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in the midst of your struggle. As you're walking on your incline of life, I pray that your, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. May be enlightened in order that you may know the hope, not wishful thinking, not expecting that it might happen, but hope with certainty. That you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance, his holy people. You know, I've been called a lot of things. Holy's not one of them. (laughs) You know, he calls you holy because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. There is an inheritance for his holy people. We've inherited promises that were made years, centuries ago, fulfilled promises, and we will inherit the promises that he will make good on the days the weeks, the months, the years to come. Even if we can't see it, we can with confidence know that he's with us. See, all these prophecies point to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and telling of the story of a coming Messiah for you and I that becomes our hope, it becomes our oxygen. Because he's been faithful, he will continue to be faithful and he will be faithful in the days to come. That's good news, guys. One of our uh, staffers, uh, Carrie Tucker, she's actually with Fellowship Mosaic. Uh, By the way, if you're not on the Advent devotional email list, please get on that list. There's something powerful. Every day through this Advent season, you get a new uh, devotional uh, from different staff members. And you hear encouragement, and I love hearing from their perspective. By the way, there's a a thread of pain in in keeping our eyes up and onward on the one who gives us strength in the midst of the storms. But Carrie Tucker from Fellowship Mosaic has shared a devotional this past week, and I wanted to quote her from the devotional a couple days ago. And she was writing from a, a position, a posture of a really hard season. I won't go into details, but their family's going through really hard things. And when she wrote this devotional, it was really, really touch and go. And they're still in the middle of it. But listen to what she writes. She asks a question. What brings comfort to us in facing pain, death, or hardship? For Israel and Judah, war, captivity, and death were certain. But God had the same message for them that he has for those of us who have faith in his son. Light is coming. I love that. Where are you on your incline today? Maybe you're in a a difficult season. Maybe you're struggling. 
And maybe you're in a good season. My wife and I, this Thanksgiving, we're able to have all three of our grandkids in the same house, first time together with a photo. And even anticipating that time with them, we were moved to tears reflecting on that, thinking about his faithfulness of what he's done. God, thank you for this. Some of us are not there. Some of us are celebrating or walking through this Christmas season with some pain. Maybe it's the, the first the first of many seasons of that person not being here that used to be here. If you're in that season, can I just say this to you? God sees you. God loves you. God cares about you. And he wants to be with you in it if you'll just invite him into it. If you find your eyes downward, look upward and know Enduring hope is found only in Jesus. And we keep our eyes up and on him. Father, thank you that we can come into this space exactly as we are. And though we may be in a season of pain, we can keep our eyes up and on you, Father. Thank you that no matter through a good, a hard, bad season, Father, we can keep our eyes up on you, knowing you will be with us. And that's what brings us hope in the midst of the struggles, the storms, the false summits of life. May we lift our eyes regardless. Together, keep our eyes on you. Put our trust and hope in you. In Jesus' name.